Hi, everyone, and welcome to another episode of You and I Build Our Bytes. In our last episode, we introduced the Next Experience Developer Tools Chrome extension and walked through the installation process. Today, we'll focus on the Inspector tab, diving into its features, and demonstrating how it can supercharge your troubleshooting efforts. For additional links and resources, check out the article linked here or in the video's description. Let's get started. Let's go ahead and access the Inspector tab and take a look around. We're going to start by opening your ServiceNow instance with the Next Experience UI enabled. And on a Next Experience page, we're going to open up the browser tools, however you do it on your browser. And we're going to go ahead and open the Next Experience Inspector tab. Here we see the home screen. And you'll see several tabs here that we're going to go over. First, we're going to start with the home tab. This is a quick dashboard that provides an overview of active components and events on your page. The total components and total event cards will always show, but the rest of the health indicator cards will only be visible if there's related issues on the page. Each card has a title, account of some type, a question mark icon that when clicked opens a modal with a description of the health indicator and a details button that navigates to the respective tab with the indicator filter applied. The components health indicator accordion shows metrics like the total number of components and their configuration health. It also highlights any misconfigured or missing components for easy troubleshooting. Some example component health indicators can include things like broken selectable properties, components with the same ID, a component state getting too big, and excessive DOM depth. If you want more information on what any of these means, you can click on the question mark on the card, or you can check out the documentation linked in the article. Now the events health indicator accordion summarizes event activity, including the most recent triggers and active listeners. It's great for spotting patterns or diagnosing event related issues. Other examples of event health indicators can include undelivered events and events that took too long to process. Again, if you want more information on what any of these means, you can click on the question mark button on the card and check out the modal or check out the documentation linked in the article. This tab is basically perfect for getting a snapshot of your page's activity before diving deeper and doing further research. Now we start with the components tab. Think of this as the map of the page. It shows you all of the components in a component tree giving you a hierarchical structure of your page's layout. You can select components using the inspect element arrow or the search bar. You can expand or collapse different sections to dig deeper into nested components. When you click on a component, it highlights on the page and loads its details in the details panel. This is super helpful for connecting the dots between what you see and what's happening behind the scenes. It also can happen the other way around. If you use the inspect arrows and hover over items in the page, it will highlight it for you in the component tree. Now, when you click on a component in the component tree, the details section pops open and it's divided into four tabs. When you select a component, we can see the component properties, the component state, the action handlers defined for the component, and we can also see a log of all actions that have been dispatched by the component. If you want to copy any of the information here, you can either do the content level copy right here, where it will copy the information of this array, or if you want to copy all the information in a tab, we have a tab level copy button up here that you can select. Sometimes for properties that are selectable or computed, you might have the ability to edit the values straight from this panel for testing purposes. You're able to tell them apart right here by hovering over them. It'll tell you double click to edit. Double click and a modal pops up. And when possible, it'll use the schema of the property to warn you if you've input incompatible information. The state tab provides details about the state object of the selected component in its entirety in a read only visualization. The action handlers tab shows all related action handlers and the action tab shows all the dispatched actions that were dispatched by the component. Here you can dispatch new actions or clear the actions list 
by using these menu items up above. Please note that the component ID and the action name are all required fields, but the payload, meta, and is action type checkbox are not required. Next, let's go ahead and look at the events tab. This tab tracks every event that's happening on your page. It's displayed inside of a header and a content section. You can filter by event type, you can view event listeners and analyze their interactions. The header section up here displays the total number of events, net new events since you opened this tab, and also when the last event was fired. It lets you dispatch new events by clicking the dispatch button right here. It lets you filter for events using the filter or the search bar. And then the content section down below is split into two parts, the log of events on the left and the events details on the right. Each row contains the action type, the component name, the time of dispatch, and the duration of the action and the action chain. These last two are only available on instances that are on Sanadu and above. Each row also has a copy button that copies the action data and a dispatch button for user actions that opens a modal with the action data of that particular action pre-filled and ready to be dispatched by clicking on the dispatch button. The logs tab provides a real time feed of console logs, errors, and warnings. This is great for spotting issues as they occur. Something important to note before we get started looking in here is that some client logs will require your instance to be at least on Sanadu, while the server logs will require you to have the admin role on the instance in order for them to populate. You can check documentation in the article for more information on what common error messages this tab can throw and what they mean. You can filter by source. Here we have the server side in a little cloud and we have client side logs with a little browser. You can also filter on the severity. And these are the same logs that appear in the glide session debugger for your server logs. They are backend server logs and they're gonna come with a timestamp, a message and a transaction ID. All of these logs will be identifiable by their source their component values will all be set to server. As far as client logs are concerned, these are the logs emitted by components. Each client log will include a timestamp, a message, and a component name. And finally, the traces tab. It provides a way to view spans generated by both the front end and back end all together. Your tab might be empty when you first load it and tracing for the back end is not turned on by default. When an instance does not support tracing, which is true for any instance on a version prior to Sanadu, it will let you know with an error message at the top. Here, you can filter for front end or back end spans, again, using the cloud and client front end and back end filter icons. You can filter by values, or you can clear the tab of any information by clicking the clear trace button. You can also check out a waterfall view by clicking into one of the traces, which is where the length of each bar is going to show you the timing of each trace. They're all color coded to differentiate between front end and back end, and you can really drill down for more details. You can troubleshoot functional issues by using traces to follow the flow of events and actions within your application. Traces provide a detailed timeline of function calls, network requests, and state changes, which will help you pinpoint discrepancies between expected and actual behaviors, which all lets you identify where a failure occurs, which will help with accurate diagnosis and resolution. And that's it for this episode. Today, we explored the full range of features available in the Inspector tab of the next experience Developer Tools Chrome extension. You now know how to use the Home tab for a quick overview. You can navigate the Components tab and leverage specialized tools like events, logs, and traces. In our next episode, we'll dive into the Profiler tab to uncover how it can help you analyze and optimize page performance. Thank you so much for watching. Check out the article for resources and step-by-step -step instructions. And don't forget to try this out on your own ServiceNow instance.
Like and share for more episodes of You and I Builder Bites. See you next time. Thank you.